The next foot we're going to, to take a look at is the seven to nine hole cording foot. And I have to admit that I had one of these feet for years. And every time I looked at it and thought about using it, I was convinced that it would be too difficult. So I just left it in the, in the package. Um, when I did use it, I found it to be just an awesome foot. And I really enjoyed what I was able to do with it. Now, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take some cording like I've got here. It's about like a number five embroidery floss. And we're going to feed a piece of the cording through each of these nine holes. Um, they make this foot in a five hole version. And this one is the seven to nine hole version. You can use it loading all nine holes or only seven of the holes. We're going to do all nine holes. Now if you have cording that's a little bit bigger than this and you find it won't feed, you can't load it through those holes, an alternate version of this foot is also this three hole, it's called a three hole yarn foot, but it works on the very same principle. Okay, so let's look at the foot, kind of understand how it works. Um, we're going to actually load the thread through these holes and then we're going to pull the thread to the back. Let me just see if I can do one real quick here. And in a minute I'll load up all nine of them. And then basically once all the holes are loaded, we're going to stitch over this cording with a, with a decorative stitch that will cover all nine strands of thread. The way the foot works on the back is that as you can see here, it's, got, it's grooved so that as you go over this cording, it'll move smoothly and, and, and allow your foot to feed smoothly across the cording. Now, I had couldn't find this foot, and I wound up a while back ordering one, uh, buying one from eBay, and when I got it and got to looking at it, I discovered it was a knockoff foot, and it didn't have this groove on the back. And so the, that the foot just just simply would bog down when you tried to sew across the cord. So be sure you get an authentic foot. This one cost me about $20, I think. Here's an example. If you're going, what could I use that for? I don't, I don't have any daughters or anything cute that I've made for my daughters, um, uh, for my granddaughters. But here's a, an example of a block that I made. And I used this, this foot for the stem of this flower. And so yeah, I was able to, I think here I went over it twice to widen it out, but makes a really pretty stem of a flower, decoration across the a pillowcase, around a little girl's dress, lots of different possibilities for this foot. Okay, I've got all the yarn loaded in the foot except for the last hole, and I thought I would show you one more time. Be sure what you do is to load the yarn through the hole going from the top of the foot toward the back. So let me get this where I can see my last little hole here. I'm going to pull that yarn through to the back. And then you can see that what I've got is those nine strands of yarn. And you can see here the yarn's going to go under the foot, that groove I was telling you about. And you'll, you'll want to pick a stitch, a zigzag type stitch or some decorative stitch that covers the entire width of those nine strands. And then sometimes what I do just as I'm moving this from my, from my um, countertop to my machine is I'll just take and put a little knot here in the end to try to keep these from from uh, un unraveling on me. So I'm going to do that. Okay, not real critical, but then that kind of keeps you straight. You don't want to tie these off because your foot, they're going to be feeding through your foot. Get that turned around like this. Okay, and the holes keep these straight and smooth while you stitch over them. Obviously, the length of the strands that you cut is are, is going to be determined by the area that you want to cover. Okay, so I'm going to take it over here to my machine. 
I'm going to take it over to my machine. I'm going to snap my foot on. Keep those tail, the tails I've knotted together out of the way. Okay. And then I've chosen just a dark piece of fabric that you can see. And I've put a little fab stabilizer behind it since it's just a narrow piece of fabric. But what I want to do now is to find a stitch that will cover that those nine strands. And um, there's a lot of different possibilities. I think I'm going to choose this honeycomb stitch. And according to what I the what I can see on my screen is the default width is about six millimeters. But I'm going to and zoom in on the needle here. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a couple of stitches just to test to see if that would cover. I'm pretty sure it won't at six millimeters. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna have to yeah, pretty close, but I'm gonna widen it out just a little bit just to make sure that all nine strands are covered. And you can make it curve. cover just pull it off just snip off the threads and bobbin and there you go and that is your seven to nine hole um, cording foot obviously if you'd use that three hole foot you would choose a little bit narrower stitch but you would be able to it would work the same way and you could put on some uh, yarn or whatever decorative uh, material that you wish to embellish your fabric with.